Many people have talked about how mutants could be introduced into the MCU, but there still comes the issue of, well, where have they been? You know, what, what have they been doing in the world since the events of Iron Man all the way up into Infinity War? So with this video, I really want to give a sort of a um, scenario of an answer and kind of uh, bleed, give a kind of mimic how Wakanda and Black Panther were introduced into the MCU and use and apply that to introducing mutants into the MCU. So, yeah, let's uh let's do this. So to introduce mutants into the MCU, you will first need to well introduce a mutant. And the best film to do this in is in Black Panther 2. So Black Panther 2 for the sake of argument uh, would be a more international film, at least this in this scenario. It would be a more international film. We would see T'Challa in different parts of the world. He'd be in New York, he'd be in Germany, he'd be in Canada, he'd be in just... It'd be a more international film because he is chasing after somebody. So let's say it's Baron Zemo or it's uh, Craven the Hunter, which is what Ryan Coogler wanted in the first film from, from the get-go. And this is his mission so before we introduce a mutant under in this scenario to this point they still have never been talked about never been introduced there aren't any hints or anything this is a midpoint in the film where we get a scenario where T'Challa is chasing Zemo through the city streets he's, he's, he's in a getaway truck it's a big getaway truck and there's a big action set piece similar to the chase in Civil War and T'Challa's on all fours and he's gunning for him and then Zemo just says, or Zemo Craven just says, you know, um, uh, it's time for you to do your thing or whatever. And we don't know who this, who he's talking to. We just know that he's telling whoever it's time for you to do your thing. And we don't see this person. So then the back of the truck opens up. And mind you, this is like T'Challa in his triumphant See, You know, he's just going for it. And it's in all, his, all of his glory, T'Challa's being T'Challa. And then as the truck opens up and we see Sabretooth. Yes, Sabretooth, step out from that truck. And not step out, he leaps out. And this is a good slow motion shot. And you see like, you know, him like he's in his like, he's in an MCU version of his classic outfit. Like the fur, the, the, the headpiece, all of it, the claws, all of it. Like no holding back. And tackles that dude to the ground. Great scene of the two of them just running on all fours after each other and fighting in the process. And they're just like two beasts, just like going at it in their in like primal claws and paws and all of that. It's just great. <laughs> and T'Challa is taken aback because he's he got his ass whooped. Like Sabretooth beats his ass because in the and I would make the MC, I would make mutants their power level that they are in the comics just to introduce a higher threat level and just a higher level of stakes. Um, when it comes to phase four and kind of where people's powers are and so yeah t'challa heads home to regroup tries to study who hit him and how he was so powerful and t'challa and shuri do sort of like let's say there's a blood sample scene and shuri discovers that he has the x gene and of course we're not gonna say that's what it is but it's there we now know he's different and we move on T'Challa would do battle with him at the end, of course, and maybe he'll outsmart him and get away. And we know he, he'll, outsmart, he'll outsmart Sabretooth, maybe lock him somewhere, or maybe a, maybe try to, like, maybe slows him down. And Sabretooth just says, fuck it, and moves on about his day. And um, we end it there. And the movie is still Black Panther. It's just like you, we treat Sabretooth the way... Um, they treat Bond villains. You know, he's there, but he's not. He's he's a part of the story, but he's not like the integral piece. You know, the same way Spectre did with Batista. Once Batista was out, the Batista showed up like three or four times. Then he was out the picture. Never saw him again. Boom. That's it. We then get to the after credit scene where we don't see him, but a man finds Sabretooth, and he says, "You know, I know what you are." You're not alone. We can work together. And Sabretooth says, you know, I am alone. Like, there's nobody out there like me except for one. And no one's promised him to me. No one's done this. And they're like, I'm out here doing my own thing and get to this one person. Then 
we see a car lift from the ground and it gets crushed in midair. Sabretooth turns to this mysterious man and we only see it from Sabretooth's perspective and he smiles and we cut to black. So what Black Panther does is kick off a setup where each film afterwards is Magneto gathering the Brotherhood of Mutants and after credit scenes but throughout the new MCU uh, we start to see just small hints of, of what's to come and we treat mutants like this growing storm you know you see you see gray clouds and you smell rain in the air like you know that something's coming to a head and in this state in the MCU the X-Men for all intents and purposes exist but the thing is it's literally Charles starting out like from the very beginning like him only having Beast, Cyclops, Storm, Iceman, and Angel like that's it like he doesn't have anybody else no one else everyone else is still out doing their own thing you know Wolverine is out there but maybe he's still in the Weapon X program or, or in the process of getting the adamantium put into a system you know T'Challa can meet Aurora but she won't be Storm you know she's just a person who is surrounded in myth from another tribe world where they believe there's a woman out there in Africa who can control storms like she's just a myth she's a legend like no one knows this girl exists at all so we grow mutants from the inside out having moving pieces working in every direction and that's pretty much it you know we lead this up to an X-Men movie of course kind of the way you know everything led up to the Avengers in 2012 but right now mutants it's all of this is just hearsay you know it's all rumors and that's how you know we grow them so you can have a film where you know characters run into wolverine but he says his name is logan you know you can have we can get short situations and move on you know in order for this to work they can't be big scenarios they have to be something that's just a passing sort of thing that like I said, grows the same way like in the beginning of the video where I said, you know, when they introduced Wakanda, Wakanda was just hearsay, you know, they, they talked about it. it was vibranium, it was in, you know, um, Captain America, and then we only get it again until Age of Ultron, and then we finally see T'Challa in Civil War, so you know, that's the way that this has to be, has to be handled, it can't be a part of the main story, but it can just be a little, little gear, you know, a little gear that just that just turns and um so that's pretty much it you know that's how i would introduce mutants into the mcu you know grow them from within and not worrying about the x-men but just the mutant population itself and and them kind of coming to coming to light through the obviously the primary mutants that we see um within the x-men and within the brotherhood of mutants and whatnot in comics things just kind of happen N nothing ever leads up anymore sometimes i mean well at least back in the day things just kind of happened nowadays you kind of get lead lead ups because everybody wants to do a big giant crossword event every five seconds but you know back then it was just boom in comes the such and such and you're like oh crap oh no who's that you know wolverine first showing up in incredible hulk like it's that's how i think these films should be handled like their comic counterparts